All right, good evening. Welcome to the channel. We got ourselves a 1960 Edsel Ranger two-door sedan. Came with these kind of funky white wallish uh, chrome and gray with uh, older Ford script, like maybe like late 40s, early 50s era kind of hubcap-ish, dog dishy thingies. And I'm gonna try to change the attitude and the look of this car. I know the Edsel is kind of a, uh, was supposed to be a little step up from the Ford, kind of elegant, but by 64, Ed, Ford had kind of abandoned that and the Edsel was just kind of like, hey, we just have to build this car for three more months, so let's just get something out there. Um, although I think the styling on the car is, is excellent, although it's, it is mostly Ford. But um, I'm gonna try to change the attitude of this car a little bit by putting some different wheels and tires on it. And you can let me know in the comments below when we're done and tell me what you think. Is it a stay or is it a go? The wheels that I have chosen are probably not really the right wheel for this car, but I had them available and I haven't put them on in another car yet, so we're going to try them on this one, if they'll even fit. So let's dig in and let's find out. Alright, so the main issue with fitment is going to be the rear. Um, whether these wheels and tires I have are actually going to physically clear in the wheel wells. Um, I've run a lot of 15 by 8s on um, other Fords, um, with up to a 275 60 15 and been able to mostly clear maybe some rubbage with people in the back or going around a corner or something but um, I'm actually going to use a 17 by 8 this time because I have these wheels available and they're a little bit different um, so first first things first let's see if they're actually going to clear on the rear now where did I put my impact gun found it Two bolt patterns on this wheel. It's getting it up in there, it's going to be the hard part. Because the ones that I have picked out are a little bit wider. Uh, I can stay on my feet. Uh, let's get this up out of the way. These can go on a different car. This might need to go down to Oregon and go on my dad's. On the 65 at my dad's house. Some wheels and tires on it, but so does the two-door hardtop. So let's see if I can actually weasel this up in there. I think it's actually going to go. It's, you know, it's imperative on these cars. Putting something different than stock, it's imperative that you jack it up by the frame, let the axle hang down, or you ain't getting it in there. Period. But the other thing I want to do is I want to take a look at these brakes. Why I'm in here because they didn't feel real great going home. They stopped, they were adequate. Let's see if we can adjust them up a little bit. Do you feel like they're way out of adjustment? No self adjusters in 1960. Actually, these ones do look like self-adjusting, but the self-adjuster is gone. Either that, or this rear end is not out of this car. Huh. These seem to be way out of adjustment. See any leakage around the wheel cylinder, which is good. I am adjusting these up a ton. I have gone way up on this screw, and it does not. It does have a self-adjuster in there, but it doesn't appear to be hooked up. 
here. I'll get you in here and show you. Take a look. All right, so you can see, it's the right rear. You can see it has a self-adjuster cable here. Comes down, the cable is just frayed, broken right there. You can still get these kits, it's not a problem. Um, but the other part of it that goes down here, that this hooks to, and there's a spring that goes here on the bottom too, that is all gone. We'll see what it looks like when we get to the other side. Um, but the shoes still look okay. And we we'll always usually want to peel these back and just see if they're... Actually, I don't see any fluid coming out of there. Out of these cups when I peel them back. They look to be dry. So that could be promising. So, so yeah. So let's, uh, let's continue and... We'll adjust this up and see if this wheel and tire fits, and we'll go from there. Okay. I want a smooth surface there. fit in there. I think it's going to. On the inside, looking okay clearance wise. Yeah, I think it might actually work. All right, again, Always jack these cars up under the frame, especially if you're putting wheels and tires on the rear, because you won't get them on there otherwise. Need that axle to droop down. So we'll get both these rears done, then we'll jack up the front, because we're going to probably want to take a look at the bearings on the front brakes too. Optimo H724.
decent tires. I would say by the looks of them that dog peed on them a lot. First thing we need to do is check that brake. See if this drop will come on. Oh yeah, it comes right off. Oh boy. Oh, and we got another one. We got another backward shoes. And looks like somebody put new brakes on this side. Uh, yeah. Somebody put one new spring on. So somebody cobbled together some brakes, but somebody, again, didn't know that the bigger shoe goes on the rear. So now we got to fix that. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn this camera off for a minute. Because you guys see me do this a million times. It was over there. Oh. Nothing from our driveway? Nope. More packages. Nobody used the clicker on the 55 Ford? Oh, idler arm bushing's bad. Let's see. I didn't know it looked too bad. off or we're going to get them all messy. The bearings are looking kind of gooey. I think we're going to need to repack them. bearing. Don't tell me it's bad. Looking okay so far. Don't see any grooves or any scoring. Oh, oh, these brakes are falling apart. And again, they got the shoes on backwards. Amy, we're going to have to go get parts. Yeah? Yeah.
the one up here still open? It's open until like 8 o'clock. This one actually has a self-adjuster, but the cable's missing. There's no guide. Oh man, what's up with this? There's no nail. The nail's gone. And again, the shoes are on the wrong side. People, drum brakes aren't that hard. It's going to be a new thing on the channel. Will we ever find a car that somebody put the shoes on correctly? All four wheels. Well, looks like we're going to need a bunch more parts. All right, so getting her cleaned out. We've got another seat out of a 62. I think we're gonna put in place of this one because this one here is pretty bad. Actually, the metal's good. We can find the upholstery. We can get this one recovered and redone. So I do like the I do like the embossed E back there. All right, so we're gonna get this whole front seat out of here. And there's only one bolt holding it down, which is kind of concerning, but. Uh, Monday through Wednesday. I'm gonna go back. So here's what it looks like with the seat out. Not very, very clean, but so far I haven't seen any any rot or rust holes. The floor actually looks pretty good. Um, I don't understand what's with all the newspaper in here. Can anybody, if anybody wants to comment below why there's newspaper all over the place underneath the carpets that they put underneath the carpets. I guess they used it for dampening? I mean, for insulation? It was under the front carpet part, it was under the rear, and some of these are like... I mean, look at this right here. The Seattle Times, January 31st. 1960. work on a couple other things at the moment and here's the look with the seat out of the 62 galaxy um, actually color wise it fits pretty well not bad for a seat that we found at a pull and save and looks like it, it's a seat that had been redone at some point it was in a car sitting 62 galaxy Tudor hardtop sitting at the pull and save it was a really car was really rusty but I end up getting the matching back seat too, but that little little spot, that little hole right there, is about the only uh, about the only uh, flaw in the whole seat. Really, um, it's actually in pretty good shape. So good score there. Fits in the Edsel just fine. So we're gonna roll with this for now until we can get the uh, original one recovered. All right. So finally got the uh, front brakes all squared away. These drums were kind of already out to their maximum machining, so it means I couldn't take any more metal off of them, but they look pretty good, so I just scuffed them up with some emery cloth. 
Again, 223 six cylinder, not a high speed car. The um, one thing on this car, um, this does use uh, pretty much the 335 brake shoes on the front. Um, not the same shoe as the 61 and up cars. Um, also, nobody lists a brake hardware kit for these cars. But I will show you a kit that works that uh, you can obtain from any auto parts store that seems to be almost identical to the original kit. So this is the uh, this is Brake Best from O'Reilly's, the uh, H7107. They have so many different. There's H7101, H7172, H736491. This is the H7107, which fits like 65 and up Galaxy rear, maybe front too, um, 65 to 67 uh, Galaxy. Um, they don't show it fitting this car. They don't actually show any kit fitting for this car, but this kit works. Um, this kit looks like it's designed maybe a little bit more for a for the rear brakes on those cars because it has a couple little extra pieces for the uh, for the uh, rear brakes for like the uh, for like the parking brake lever and stuff, which you don't need on the front. So anyway, we got all new brakes with new. Um, the only thing we reused was the drums. New hoses. Both of these came loose, which was awesome. Uh, pedal feels good. I think we've got them adjusted evenly. Um, we've got new wheel cylinders, spring hardware, shoes, repacked the bearings. Both inner bearings had a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of corrosion on them from, um, from probably from sitting. So like one of the rollers was etched, which one roller's bad, that means the whole bearing's bad. So put new inner bearings in it, repack the outers, so front, Front brake wise, we should be good to go. So this is a long car to get in a shot, but this is how it looks with the new wheels. Again, not really the style as that you would think in this car. You would think of Hurst, you know, performance, shifters, speed equipment with a six cylinder Edsel Ranger, but I still think they look pretty cool on there and we had them, so there we are. <laughs> Yep, so here we are out along Highway 291. Dad's here helping me try to rescue the Edsel, get it the rest of the way home. All right, so the car performed flawlessly for the wedding and went to a barbecue at the in-laws yesterday, which was Sunday, and went to leave and it uh, started up and died. Well, hmm, that's strange. It's been working good. Um, ended up having to abandon it, get a different car. Found out that the uh, wire for the uh, fuel pump was not um, connected to the uh, was connected to the positive term of the coil, and it wasn't a very good connection. So we got that fixed, got fuel, made it halfway home, and it died again. Now it appears that that little clicky clacky fuel pump is bad. So we're just about a half mile down from O'Reilly, so we went and grabbed another one, an Edelbrock. And uh, we've got this wired in, and now let's see if we can pump some fuel up and uh, get this car to start and actually get it the rest of the way home. All right, so car's home on the trailer. Will not run. We have spark. We don't seem to have fuel. But even pouring fuel in the carb doesn't seem to uh, do anything. So... Next step is we're gonna we're gonna make sure this steel fuel line is not restricted, and then we'll once that's done, then we're gonna check compression on the engine. I'm sure the car was running good, but I don't think I don't think it's been run like we've run it the last weekend in like a long time. <laughs> I think it was putted like into Colville and back home. <laughs> Not wound out in second gear going up Big Sandy. Alright, so before we get carried away on the fuel system, I'm going to run a few, uh, run this compression tester across the cylinders and just see what we've got for, uh, for readings on that, just to make sure we don't have a dead hole somewhere that might be contributing to our problems. So let me find my dad and we'll commence to testing. 
All right, so here we go, cylinder number one. I'm gonna say that's about 125 pounds. All right, let's go number two. Go a little more. Huh? Crank it a couple more times. All right. So it looks like just over a hundred on that one. All right, hit it on number three. All righty. Let's see, we're about 115 on that one. All right, go ahead and hit number four. About 125 on that one. Number five. about 110 and number six for all the glory <laughs> so I got one hit about 120 so or yeah no no super dead holes Might Should be enough to run. Yeah, and you might lose the, you know, power. In. This never had any power to begin with, so. Well, not with five out of six spark plugs <laughs> rattling around. So the original spark plugs didn't look too bad, but at two dollars and ninety-seven cents each, we figured we'd throw six new ones in it. Uh, compression numbers on a pad there. A little bit lower than I think 150 spec. A couple of the cylinders down to 110, but they're all within 15 pounds of each other, so I uh, don't see anything really alarming there. So now we'll, I guess I'll we'll turn our attention back to fueling issues and uh, see if we can get this thing to fire off again. So we've got the fuel line disconnected here. We've got it disconnected, the hard line back at the tank, and we're gonna. We're just going to blow air through this with a little Milwaukee inflator just to double check to make sure that this line isn't restricted somehow. I don't think we're going to find that that's the case, but uh, only one way to know for sure. Action! Here we are looking for air to come through here. Yeah. See if we're getting flow. Uh -oh. for definitely gas in this line, so... Okay, we have plenty of flow. Fuel line is unobstructed. Alright, so we're just cycling the key, seeing if the pump will pump fuel up to the Do you feel anything? Put your thumb on it. Might be cavitated. Full of air. You can always use a mighty vac to pull fuel. Careful. You'll be drinking a bunch of that stuff. It's 91 octane clear gas. You'll be up all night. <laughs> I don't see any. Let me pull this back. No, no fuel coming out this line at all. I took the rubber off, just the steel line, and there's nothing coming out. Okay. So maybe we do got to mount the pump in a different location. 
Well, let's just try letting it down, right? So we need a 7 16. All right, so this is where, this is how the tank was configured back here under the car when we got it. This is a different pump that we put in, but we mounted it in the exact same place in the same way. Edelbrock says that the pump needs to be as low as the bottom of the tank or it will not work. Uh, I'm sure that's the same with the other pump that was in it. It says these pumps can be pushers or pullers, um, but they are gravity fed from the tank. Um, so, I, yeah, I could see where the tank wouldn't like to uh, flow uphill to the pump because it doesn't seem to be pulling it much. So, um, we're going to try dropping the uh, pump down and just letting it hang down at the bottom of the tank level to see if that helps us to get fuel up to the carb. Still doesn't explain why the car ran great all the way home, all weekend, and now just refuses. So we're letting the fuel fuel pump hang lower now to, toward the bottom of the tank to see if that will allow it to pump fuel. Any luck? We're not looking for luck. But any providence? <laughs> any fuel? Nothing here. You know, it almost felt like there was vacuum there. <laughs> really? There's nothing coming out there. So what we've done is we've dropped the tank the pump down so it's lower than the tank. So we're thinking maybe when the tank gets to a certain level that it quits getting fuel. But this one doesn't seem to be picking up any fuel. I don't want to burn it up, so. So now I've basically got it going out of the tank. I've got the pump level with the bottom of the tank and I've got it just going into a jug. And we'll see if it will pump fuel into the jug. Basically downhill. Okay, fire in the hole. Okay. Is the pump running? Yes, pump is running. No fuel is coming out. Huh? Pump is running, no fuel is coming out. Zero. Possibly. Okay. The only thing we could do would be to cut a piece of hose, get it ready. All right. You want me to engage pump? Tell me when you want me to crank it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> spraying decently in there? I could see. Alright, go ahead. Yeah. 
closed. Yep, go ahead. back up a little bit. to hazard it. The, will the door open? Now it won't open. It won't as soon as you get in the car. So with this cam, with this fast idle cam, uh -huh. that affects where the idle screw is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I... See, if I put it like that... Go ahead and fire it up. Oh, see now, see now you're on the foot feed now, right? Okay. So I might need to, so I don't know, if I wire this thing all the way open, or just leave it so the choke's just wide open, yeah. and then I can, well, I'm gonna need a shorter screwdriver. Down 
Okay. All right, go ahead and fire it up. Okay. Well, so we know it still runs. Now we got to figure out a fuel system. All right. So we got the car running again, off the tank that's underneath, off the tank that's on the front of the car right now. So now we're going to go back to the underneath. I'm going to drop the fuel pump down to the bottom level of the tank run some little bit different hose because I think maybe once the fuel level was getting down to pump level since it was mounted on the bottom of the trunk floor I think it might have started starving for the pump for fuel so we're gonna try this and we're gonna we're actually gonna try to make a car show tonight it's a charity car show for Meals on Wheels um, it's probably already started and we're like an hour away but uh, no time like the present All right, let's see how we did. We got the fuel pump mounted lower. I think we have it primed. running so here's essentially what we did we uh, instead, of, instead of the pump being mounted up here on the floor we moved it down here on the bottom of this sheet this uh, this just gravel shield or whatever that is and so now it's more a little bit more in line with the bottom of the tank it's not perfect it's not all the way down but really there's no place to mount it and get it that low um, because they do say they want these mounted at the lowest point of the tank. So um, we're going to take it for a spin now and see if she'll sustain and hopefully be back on the road again. So we got her running. We may end up at the car show right as everybody's leaving, which is pretty much part of the course for us. Uh, that is, if she keeps running, then we make it. But I got faith in her. I think, I think we got... The uh, problem sorted out and we'll let you know when we get there and see if there's anybody left. At any rate, we're going to get us some fish and chips at the old Ron's drive-in and that's worth it a lot. First time in I don't know how many years, the old Edsel is on the freeway. I don't even know if she can keep up. We don't got too far to go, so hopefully we don't make too many people mad here. I can run pretty close to 55 comfortably. Hole. Only got one gauge, temperature gauge. It's usually about where it runs. It's about 90 some degrees today, so. Well, we made it. There's a show. Some cars out there still. 
So here we are. We made it to the show. There's some pretty cool stuff here. We're right at the end. Went from four to seven. We're a few minutes after seven, but looks like they might be doing awards or something. So we'll kind of walk through these cars real quick. My son made it in the old SN95, performed flawlessly. Got a nice Lincoln over here, two door. Pretty cool car. Chero. Alaska plates. Real nice. Beautiful 56 Sunliner convertible there. Extremely nice car. Out. So it shows just in so got some Mustangs, some later model stuff. Really nice uh, baby bird over there we'll check out. Then we got uh, Eric Utzel's Ranger. 58 four-door. 58, four-door hardtop, Teletouch, gotta love the drum speedometer, it's inspiration to get our 58 going. Nice driver. There's just something about that grill. Sixty-three Galaxy 500. 390 car, Z code, 300 horse, four barrel. Love the Thunderbird valve covers. Nice bench seat, column shift car. Looks like they got a trophy. Nice straight black car. Black's hard to hard to get straight. Hard to lay black paint on. The car's got to be perfect, and this one's pretty nice. Very nicely done. Looks like they've done a lot of work getting this one back on the road. Well deserved trophy. Gets, oops, I topped the radiator off. My buddy John Henry's 65 F100 short box. Cool little truck. Still got the 352 in it. Yeah. It's bone stock. Automatic on the column. Love it. This little color coded seat. Very cool. output 352 two barrel. Yeah. 26 miles per gallon. <laughs> That's uphill in a headwind, right? Yeah. In the snow. Really cool pickup. Now I gotta get my 66 F100 going too. So much inspiration, so little time. Well, so there you have it. Bought a car, got married, used the car in a wedding. It only broke down on us once. Made it to a car show. All in a week's time. And you know, the old girl She's just performing admirably. So, 1960 Edsel Ranger, one of 777 built. Um, not the greatest car, but uh, it's in really good dry condition for its age. So, got a few things to do to it still. Gonna tune up the exhaust a little bit. Um, for the six cylinder, it's not a powerhouse, but it runs all right. Um, but, You'll see this car again in the future. Um, man, those rocker panels are just really, really, really rough.
all in all, she's a good cruiser that runs and drives. I put some seat belts in it so it's safe. Um, swapped a seat out of a 62 Galaxy into it because the seat was pretty torn up. Um, and we've got ourselves a nice little driver that actually is pretty thrifty on fuel. So we'll turn our attentions now to getting this thing running and driving. This 69 convertible, which I was supposed to have done this ready this spring. And it's now August, two weeks to back to school. So yeah, we're right on schedule. So you'll be seeing that here on the channel real, real soon as we uh, see if we can get this thing back on the road after a long slumber. Thank you for watching. More content coming soon. If you like big Fords, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Share this video. Thanks again. God bless and have a wonderful evening.